I'm sure you all know by now that the M1 iPad Pro obviously has an M1 processor inside, but the question is, is it as powerful or almost as powerful as its desktop counterparts, the M1 Max, specifically in terms of editing? So in this video, I thought I would do a little testing on the M1 iPad Pro with some 4K footage and see if we can bring this machine to its knees or perhaps even be pleasantly surprised. Now the footage I'm gonna be editing on this iPad is actually from the camera I'm recording this A-roll on right now. So it's a Sony A7 Mark III, so it's a full frame camera. It's shooting in 4K resolution, 100 megabytes per second bit rate, and the codec is XAVCS, which if you know anything about codecs, it's a really, really compressed codec which isn't really the greatest for editing. Now I do realize that this isn't going to be a super fair comparison with the M1 Max because the editing software available on the iPads right now is kind of limited. So we've got Luma Fusion and we've also got uh, Premiere Rush, which is like a mobile version. So they are no comparison to the desktop version of DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, for example, but we'll make do for this video. Okay, so first things first, we've got the iPad set up. We're actually going to plug in an external SSD drive or just SSD uh, into the iPad so we can actually import footage and start working. Now let's open up LumaFusion and we'll import some footage and we'll see what performance we can get. All right, now that we have a new project, we're gonna come up here, we're going to add some footage. Uh, so we're gonna go to the external drive into the Sony A7 Mark III, 4K, 100 megabytes per second. And we're gonna find some footage here. So by the way, guys, this footage is from a previous video I made. So it's a portable Mac desk setup. So if you guys are keen to watch that, check out my channel. So if we just play this footage back in real time, you can see it works pretty well. There's no stuttered frames or anything like that. It's not glitching. So if we trim this just a little bit, and then we can put that onto the timeline. And we'll also come into the settings, uh, into the preferences, and we'll make sure that the preview is set to best. So this should be giving us a, maybe not quite 100%, but as close to 100% playback as we can get. And if we come here and we play, you can see that's working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. So just a quick note about this footage. So as I mentioned before, it is compressed. So it is a XAVCS codec, which means it's actually quite compressed to the point that most systems are gonna have issues actually playing it back smoothly. So if you think of compressed footage, think of it as a file that's been zipped. And what the iPad is having to do before it plays back a single frame is actually completely unzip that particular frame and then display it on the screen. So generally it's not ideal to actually edit in this kind of footage, but I thought it would be a good thing to do for this video because most people are gonna be editing straight out of the camera or straight out of their drone or whatever it is. So it's a cool test to do. Anyway, let's come in here and we will find a few more clips. So there's a nice one there. We're gonna add that onto the timeline. And then what we'll do is we're gonna add another one of this bag, the accessory bag, uh, add that onto the timeline. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna start double and triple stacking the timeline. So what I mean by that is actually stacking different footage on top of each other. So if I come to this particular clip, and I'll trim it a bit, and I'm gonna import that onto the timeline. I'll zoom out a little bit, and I'm actually going to drag this above there. So as you can see now, we are now double stacked, which means we have two stacks of footage on top of each other, 4K footage, obviously. And if we come in here and we play this back in real time, you can see that that is playing back quite well. Uh, it's switching between the stacks quite easily. Um, if I pause this and I'm now going to add in another clip. So we'll shorten this one a little tiny bit. And we're going to put that in there. And I'm actually going to shorten this clip just a smidge. And we're going to come up here, we're going to go to transitions. These transitions are pretty average, so we're not going to be winning any editing awards here. But again, this is just an iPad, guys. We're going to go to the wipe down transition. We're going to slap that in there. Now we're going to play. 
So go to the other stack and then transition and absolutely no issues. That plays back really, really smoothly. So, so far guys, I'm quite impressed with the performance of the iPad. Uh, it's barely warm as well, like it barely even feels on. So give me a couple of seconds, let me put a bit more footage into this particular timeline. Let's make a triple stack and I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay guys, so it's been a few minutes now and as you can see here, I now have a triple stacked 4K timeline. So this isn't probably typically something I would do on an iPad. I do have a editing PC that I use to edit basically all of these videos and that is an RTX 3090 with 64 gigabytes of RAM and a AMD 3900X CPU, uh, which is quite powerful, obviously. And even then, I probably only generally stick to about two stacks, sometimes three stacks, with B-RAW and also 4K footage from my Sony A7 III as just a B-roll. Um, but as you can see here, this is playing back quite well. The scrubbing won't be great. Like I said before, it's compressed. Um, but if we just come in here and we play this. So zero issues there at all. That is the full 24 FPS, even with transitions. Uh, and you can see that's playing totally fine. We're about to come into a double stack. Uh, if I skip forward a bit, this is now triple stacked. I'll play. So really zero issues there at all. Very, very impressive stuff. Uh, if I skip forward and let's even come on here and we will split this. And then I might just delete that one. So take it back to double stack, move that a bit over. Play. So very, very responsive. It's not stuttering, it's not freezing at all. Uh, so I'm quite impressed. So just a quick note on LumaFusion, guys. I'm quite impressed as to how it runs and how it performs, uh, even when using your fingers and just using touch. Uh, it's quite easy to edit on for basic things. So yeah, I would totally use this if I was out on the road and I only had an iPad. All right, so let's just quickly come in here. We'll add a title just for the fun of it. There's not, not very many nice titles here, unfortunately. So let's just do a really weird one like that. Uh, then we're gonna edit this text. Uh, hello, YouTube. Let's just leave it at that. Go back. We're actually going to now export this or render it. So we're gonna come out here to export. I'm actually going to go export as a movie. I'm not gonna choose any of those pre-selections there. So I'm gonna go files. And we're gonna set this to 4K, 25 FPS. Video quality, basically as good as you can get, extreme, 100 megabytes per second. Uh, the codec is gonna be H.264, which is a nice compressed codec, good for uploading to YouTube. Um, we're gonna go down to, okay, that is about it. So let's export that. Let's call it a 4K test, and we're now going to export. So as you can see there, guys, that is two minutes of 4K footage. Uh, it's exporting very, very quickly. I'm gonna say that's probably gonna be under a minute, a minute and a half maybe. Uh, and again, this is really not warm at all. It's just blazing through this 4K footage. So let's give it a second to render. Okay, so the render is just about to complete and there we go, all done. Uh, let's just save that back on the external drive. So yeah, really, really impressive guys. That was under 90 seconds for two minutes of 4K footage. Very high quality, 100 megabytes per second. Now, although this is somewhat impressive, uh, the reality is you're really hamstrung by iPad OS at the moment. LumaFusion is good, but there's no comparison to the full desktop versions of say, DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. So until these programs move to iPad OS, it's really hard for me to actually recommend to do any kind of editing on an iPad. Yes, it's possible. Yes, the M1, as we've just seen, just destroys almost anything. By the way, if you guys wanna see 6K B raw or red raw footage, let me know. Also, let me know how to actually use it on LumaFusion because I don't actually know how to import it or if it actually works. But although it might sound like I'm not really a fan of the M1 iPad and editing, it's still very, very early days. What I think is gonna happen is that come WWDC in a few months, we're gonna see developers like DaVinci and also Adobe uh, producing maybe not quite full desktop equivalent apps for the iPad, but very, very close. 
And I think they're gonna be able to take advantage of the M1 chip in this iPad much, much better than what we've just seen. So fingers crossed that is the case. But apart from that, guys, thanks for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.